Okay, your first lesson today is that uh, teachers have lives, and tonight I just came from hockey game, so you get me with a hat and a jacket on. Um, what we're working on today in today's lesson, though, is currency exchange rates. So if you're going to the U.S. for a vacation, you have some Canadian money, you're going to exchange it at the bank. So what we're going to work on is to be able to, to be able to convert one currency into another. Okay, so converting Canadian dollars into U.S. dollars. When you come back, maybe you have a little money left over from the U.S. dollars, so you'll change it back to Canadian. And also to understand buying versus selling rate. Every time you convert money, the bank takes a little bit of it. Um, I guess to ensure themselves in case the exchange rate changes, or also because banks are in the business of making money. Before we start, what we need to look at is banks have exchange rates for money. If you take a certain amount of money in, they will convert it based on how much one dollar is worth or how much one unit is worth. So for example up here, one Canadian dollar equals 0 0.78312 euros if you're traveling to Europe. One Canadian dollar equals 81.250485 yen. So a yen is actually closer to a penny than a dollar. Or one yen is 0 0.012308 Canadian dollars. And the reason um, typically we'd use United States dollars to compare but when I look today, they're almost exactly equal. They're about three decimal places. It's 1.000 and then some numbers. So there's really not a big difference between them, so I'm not using that as an example today. Um, so one thing with currency is sometimes you'll find, oh, well, if I have to convert $200 Canadian into euros, well, I always just multiply. Well, that's wrong. You can't always just multiply. For example, if we're trading yen, and from yen to Canadian, do I multiply by this number or by this number? Because they're both Canadian to yen or yen to Canadian. Are we always going to multiply? Or are we always going to divide? And one way we can keep that straight is by using our related rates technique. Um, related rates is basically this whole chapter and a lot of the future chapters to come. So and it's a rate because we're comparing one amount of something to another. Like if you're driving 50 kilometers per hour, this is one Canadian dollar to this many yen. So we'll set it up using what I've been calling our fish technique. So converting Canadian into euros, I'm going to keep Canadian on top, euros on the bottom. And as long as you set it up, so you make sure you're always keeping your units in the right spot, you'll be fine. So we're converting 200 Canadian into how many euros? And our exchange rate, so we need to check Canadian dollars into euros. So if you have a big chart with a whole bunch of these, you'll be looking for it. Oh, well, here's Canadian into euros. A 1 goes by the Canadian, so Canadian's on top, 1. Euros is on the bottom, so this number is 0 0.78312 goes on the bottom. And now what we need to do is we can solve this using our fish technique. Go above or below the x. x is on the bottom, so we go below. So we'll have 200, it always times is first, and then it's divide. Dividing 1 isn't really necessary. Um, whenever it's divide or times 1, it'll always be the same as if we didn't do it. But I'll put it there just to make sure um, we're doing our whole fish. So 200 times 0.78312 divide by 1 is... 156.624 euros and the thing about money is you are always going to round to two decimal places so it's 156.62 euros okay um, let's look at another example here let's convert um, 300 Canadian dollars into yen. And now if we look back here, well, which one are we using? We're converting Canadian into yen. So one Canadian is this many yen. So 300 Canadian over how many yen do we want? So remember, Canadian's on top. Yen's on the bottom, and going Canadian to yen, one Canadian 
is 81.250458 yen. And now I can do my fish technique. So 300 times 81.250458 divide by 1. Let's try this. 300 times 81.250458 equals... 24,375.1374 yen. But remember, money's always going to round to the two decimal places. Think of it as the nearest penny. It would be dollars, dimes, penny. Even though we're in yen, we'll go to two decimal places. So the seven is going to round this to a four. So if someone ever gives you a 20,000 yen bill, that's a lot of money. But it's not like $24,000 amount of money. So $300 is 24,375 yen. So as I said at the start, banks are in the business of making money. So this today is the Canadian to US dollar exchange rate. They're almost the same. One Canadian is 0.99984 US dollars. So the Canadian dollar um, is doing a little bit worse right now, by a very, very small amount. So, but if you go to the bank right now, the bank doesn't exchange on this rate. The bank makes sure they make a little money. So, the bank will buy US dollars for 90.9724. So, if you take in one US dollar, they'll give you 97 cents Canadian. The bank will sell US dollars for 1.0246. So, it would take you a dollar and two cents plus a little bit to get. A US dollar. So let's see how this can affect if you just changed money back and forth. So let's look at a hundred dollars Canadian. If you started with 100 Canadian dollars, how much would you have in American money? So we're changing 100 Canadian. We're going to buy US dollars. So we have 100 Canadian. We're going to buy US dollars. So the bank will sell us US dollars for this amount. Because if we're trying to buy them, the bank is selling them. So, one, they're selling US dollars for a dollar two Canadian. So, 1.0246 Canadian is one US dollar because they will sell one US dollar for this much Canadian. So, one US dollar, this much Canadian. And when you put this into your calculator using your fish technique, 100 times one divide 1.0246. you will end up with $97.60 US dollars. So with the exchange rate, even though the exchange rate is almost equal, you can see the bank's taken a little bit of money. Now let's say, uh oh, we made a mistake, we're not going to the US anymore. You now need to sell your US money back to Canadian. So the bank is going to buy your US money back from you. So now we're going from our USD into Canadian. And in this case, we have right now $97.60 US. We want to find out how much Canadian money we're going to have. And remember, we have US money right now. So the bank will buy our US money for this amount. So now, we have one USD is 0.9724 Canadian. So if we use our fish technique again, 90, sorry, I made a mistake here. This should be 97.60. We now have 94.91 cents Canadian. So by doing two transaction, transactions, we went from $100 Canadian and we bought US money. So the US, the bank sold us the US money. Then we didn't go on our trip. So we took our 9760 US and we want to change it back to Canadian money. So now we had to sell the bank our money. So the bank bought our money for this rate. We now have 
$94.91 Canadian. So all we did was we took our $100, exchanged it into US, then changed our US to Canadian, and you can see the bank profited $5.09 off us. So your assignment for this will be all of section 1.5 in your book. So if you need any more examples, um, if this didn't make sense, you can read through section 1.5. They show a, a few alternate solutions as well. And to do all the questions, once you are done, you will be done chapter one. I uh, will give you an assignment. You can try it. I'll mark it. If it goes well, you're ready for the test. If not, you'll need a little more practice before the test.